So now that I've completed my nonlinear graph, I've identified the relationship and I've transformed my h values. So I've square rooted all of my h values. I'm now ready to plot my uh, linear relationship graph. Because my velocity axis hasn't been uh, transformed, I can leave that exactly as it is. But I'm going to need to change my x-axis and because my values go up to about 1.87 I think a, a good choice of scale would be to use one big box to each 0.1 value on square root of height. So let me start by writing in my labels. So on the x-axis, I have the square root of height. I've got to be really careful here. In brackets, I need to put my units. And because it's no longer meters, because it's no longer height, since I've square rooted height, it is now the square root of meters. And I could express that as m to the power of a half as well. And this And this axis is still my average velocity. Units are meters per second. All right, so I've now plotted my points and I'm confident that that is a linear relationship. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my straight line. Place my ruler on the points, and I'm looking for a line of best fit that is going to clearly show the trend line passing through most of the points. Um, and if it doesn't pass through most of the points, then it must be the line must have approximately equal number of points above and below the line. So I think. So that's not that, that's acceptable, and I haven't got my title yet. Now, the equation we're going to derive. A mathematical relationship from is the equation of a straight line which is y equals mx plus c and I'll warn you now that you don't leave the y or the x in your final equation. Okay so let's get rid of those straight away and our um, y value, the, whatever's the quantity on the y-axis, is our average velocity and that's equal to our gradient. So we need a gradient. Now for the gradient, we want to pick two, any two points on the line, not data points. I wouldn't use data points because they don't always lie exactly on the line. So I've picked two points that are going to be easy for us to read off the graph. And I'm going to come way back down here. And I think this point here should be reasonably easy to read. And I'm going to go up to here. I'm looking for a line where the line crosses one of the, the major grid lines, ideally. I'm going to say about there. I'm going to draw my construction lines. So now that I've drawn my construction lines, I can see that my value up here is 7.5 and my value down here is 0 0.5. So my change in x for my gradient, I'll do my gradient calculation in here, m 
equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and that can also be expressed as rise over run so my rise has gone from 0 0.5 to 7.5 and so that is a change of 7 and then my change in x values my x2 would be 1.7 and my x1 value would be 0 0.12 and so my change there is 1.58 and I'll write that in full just in case any of you are a bit confused as to where that came from my y2 value was 7.5 so that's 7.5 minus my y1 value which was 0 0.5 and that's divided by my x2 which was 1.7 minus my x1 value which was 0 0.12 0 0.12 that's clear enough to read and so that gives me 7 divided by 1.58 Uh, and so my gradient here, I might give that as a decimal. And so my gradient as a decimal would be 4.4. And I think two significant figures is appropriate here because my height was only measured to two significant figures. So my gradient is 4.4. My x is the square root of height. So I use h for height. So that's times the square root of h. And my y-intercept value, well, you can see here that it hits 0. And let's just do a common sense check. If the height of the ramp was 0, then the square root of that height would also be 0. And my average velocity, I would expect it to be zero. If the ramp had no height, I wouldn't expect any velocity um, as a result of that. And so my y-intercept value is zero. And so I can rewrite that as average velocity equals 4.4 times the square root of height. And that is our mathematical relationship. And it's sometimes worth writing in the gradient with units. And so my average velocity in meters per second, my gradient and the units there are meters per second per square root of meters. or meters per second over meters to the half. And you might be able to do a bit more analysis with that. And the square root of height, my units there are of course, square root of meters or m to the half.